Oh hi, I didn't see you there. My name is Bliss Foster and today we're going to be doing our first analysis episode that is a follow-up to last week's episode about this gorgeous hood by air piece from spring summer 2014. If you have not seen last week's episode, I strongly advise that you go and watch that first because this is a fairly complicated piece of clothing and I'm not going to be reviewing a whole lot about like the ins and outs and details of the actual thing itself. So if you would like some kind of setup as to this, as to like what this piece of clothing actually is, and it is a lot of things, I recommend that you go take a short jaunt over into that video. And then you can come back over here for some analysis and some hot takes. Thank you. Shall we start? Let's start. Hood by Air is a brand by Shane Oliver that gained a lot of notoriety in like 2012, 13, 14, 15, 16 ish. Um, and they're now defunct or on hiatus, which I, I think they're just permanently defunct at this point. But yeah, I think Hood by Air was getting a lot of attention at the time because they were presenting this image that was so hard to ignore. They seemed to be saying so many concrete things about like gender identity and racial politics and like where fashion is actually going and like what are the kids doing. The, the brand's image, love it or hate it, was a very compelling thing to look at. Even if you thought that it just kind of looked like a bunch of people who were wearing tattered clothes. <laughs> To put everything into context, Hood by Air started as a brand originally in 2006 when Shane Oliver used the money for college that his mom had saved up to start a clothing brand, which she was supportive of because she was a cool mom. He did see some success with the brand. Um, he got into some nice boutiques in Manhattan just selling high-end hoodies and t-shirts, but later decided to put the brand on hold so he could focus on the party that he was throwing with his group of friends that was called Ghetto Gothic. And so if any part of you was doubting that we are in 2009 right now, that's the proof right there. Ghetto Gothic. In 2012, he picked the label back up because a lot of people who were attending the Ghetto Gothic parties kept saying like, oh my gosh, the old Hood by Air stuff. I miss that stuff so much. I wish you would make more of it so I could buy it from you. And Shane was like, I might do that. And he did. So in 2012, he picked the whole brand back up and they continued to do uh, runway shows, make hoodies and t-shirts mostly, but he really started picking up steam and really got the attention of the fashion press in the spring-summer 2014 show where this piece was featured. Most of all, I wanted to make this video because I felt like this piece kind of encapsulated in a very clean way the entire uh, narr narrative, if you could call it that, of what Hood by Air is and kind of like the the whole like what it means behind the entire thing. I feel like this piece very like crisply explains all that Shane Oliver was kind of trying to push for with that brand in a single garment. Not everything, but a lot of it. Shut up. So let's dive directly into the analysis. Ah, that is too hot. The number one word that gets thrown around too much when people are talking about Hood by Air in an analytical way is the word androgynous. And it's not really super weird that that word gets thrown around too much. I mean, like one of the primary models that Shane Oliver would cast in his show was a female model that went by Boy Child, who presents, unsurprisingly, as a dude. And there were lots of other models that were being cast where it's like, Oh, that's a guy, but he's wearing a lot of stuff that makes him sort of look like a girl. And so a lot of critics would just kind of take all of that stuff and rather lazily kind of crunch it all down and be like, it's androgynous, moving on. But what's really being ignored there is that that's not androgynous. It's not you being confused about a gender thing. It's someone who has a gender and then says like, I really like this element of this other gender. I want to do that. He's making stuff that plays very directly into specific gender, um, not stereotypes, because I don't think he's doing it in a, like, a derisive or negative way, but he's kind of playing into these gendered stories and kind of brings those to the forefront and kind of plays with them in an interesting way that he kind of finds to be, you know, kind of sexy. Shane discusses this pretty directly at one point when he's doing an interview with The Cut, and he says, there's an element of femininity, 
the element of masculinity, the element of both, and the element of celebrating, and also breaking down all these elements within the same conversation. There's another really good quote that he has when he's speaking to Hype Beast, where um, they ask him, so what are the major focuses of this upcoming season? And he says, it's sort of like America as a concept as opposed to a reference and figuring out how to move forward from the stereotypes that have been pushed on us fashion-wise. It's building new standards for ourselves which hold true to our heritage but don't pigeonhole us. So that one I want to use in reference as we're moving forward here. So kind of what we're looking at here is uh, it just sort of seems to be like a really busy t-shirt. On the top we have very clearly just like jersey knit t-shirt plain stuff above the zipper. Down here, this sort of looks like kind of like prototypical, like 2012, like Kanye West, ASAP Rocky, kind of like streetwear, streetwear stuff. It's the full like contemporary uniform, whether you're a professional or a student or an athlete or, you know, a creative director. Most days you're waking up and you're putting on some version of jeans and a t-shirt. And then when we start to actually like take the thing apart a little bit and we find out that these zippers actually work and that this belt comes undone and that these come apart on the sides that they're all like functional zippers and stuff. We of course find that on the inside of this, there is a suit jacket. Let's actually pause for a second. Move this over just, that's a little less conventional, right? So in my way of thinking, there is the like the new contemporary uniform, the old, uniform and then this divider the part of it that like separates the two is the thing that makes the piece unique you can see that point being made especially because this conversation about the male uniform was walked down the runway by someone who presents as a female wearing some of the coolest pants that i have ever seen ever this also plays into Hood by Air's overall design aesthetic in that it kind of has a duality of like, which piece is this? Is this a jacket or is this a shirt? We see this all throughout Shane Oliver's runway shows where we're kind of constantly asking ourselves, are these shorts or is this a shirt? Is this a tennis dress or is this a polo? Is this a coat or is this a dress? Shane Oliver's point is that it's way more fun for everybody if it's just both. This concept also connects really hard to the gender non-binary models that are in the show in the first place where we don't, as the observers, need to immediately be able to label everybody in order to appreciate what they're bringing to the table. In this way, I think Shane is encouraging us to be more curious than judgmental. Finally, I think it's important for us to note that this piece is uh, cool as hell and looks really neat when one wears it. So let's definitely keep that in mind moving forward as well. All right, cool. So hopefully that was somewhat entertaining, somewhat fun. I don't know. I really enjoyed like doing a ton of research into Hood by Air. I've been like vaguely interested in the brand for forever, but before buying this bad boy, I didn't really have any reason to like take a deep dive into like everything that they've put out and like all the commentary on it and stuff but i personally love this article of clothing and it was super exciting getting to do like two full episodes about the thing um i would love to know what you guys think about this especially like anybody who happened to be like really into the brand at the time and i don't know it's you know like all criticism stuff like it's it's a hundred percent just like my opinion stuff, so I'm not like trying to like force a narrative onto anybody's brand or especially force a narrative onto something that other people kind of consider to be a, a very personal part of their own style. So if you have any uh, any hot takes, clapbacks, or accusations, um, please uh, throw them in the comments. It could also be nice. I don't know. <laughs> Until next time.